Hi, this is Robert Clickybeard with the Commercial Landscaper Podcast. We're going to take about 30 minutes of your life to deliver some amazing content from accomplished leaders, business owners, to provide you some great Ironman mindsets to help you scale your business, to become a better leader, and push yourself out of a comfort zone into something that's going to stretch you. We hope you really enjoy these shows and encourage you to like and share with your friends, your network, family members, try and get a wider audience and improve our industry. On each show, I'm going to try and pull out one type of Ironman mindset insight that you could take back to your business. And if you're implementing one insight every single week or all the shows, then it's going to make a dramatic improvement to your business. Super excited as well to share that we're partnering up with Boss Business Management Software, which is the ultimate cloud-based solution providing comprehensive insights and tools to optimize performance. Join the Boss community today and transform your business so you too can say, my boss is working for me. Cheers, everyone. Hi, this is Robert Clickybeard with the Commercial Landscaper Podcast. Really excited today to be joined by Sean Prince. Sean, good to see you again. I know we were in uh, Denver together at the Thought Leader Retreat, so good, good to see you again. Yeah, always good to connect, Robert. So, Sean, tell uh, for our audience, uh, who, who's Sean? Tell us about Sean and your, your business. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so just professionally, um, I've spent about 20 years in the green industry. Uh, I started, I feel like I've, I've checked all the buckets on the green industry. I started on a fruit farm uh, in Southwest Michigan, uh, you know, growing fruit uh, and, and spending time on the farm there. And then uh, got into the golf course, turf grass industry. That's where I was, uh, went to school for. That's the subject I went to school for at Michigan State. Um, and then spent probably three or four years in that industry and then uh, found the landscaping industry uh, back in 2005 is when I uh, entered into the industry and had different roles with operational and, and sales leadership. And then uh, as of the past two years have been uh, a quote unquote tech guy, uh, although I don't take that, you know, take that mantra, but uh, I work with a great team that uh, is really building some cool stuff for the industry. Um, so that's professionally, Robert, uh, family-wise, which is much more important to me, obviously. I've got a beautiful wife, Amy, and and four kids that, uh, you know, whenever I'm not working, they're occupying my time and, and spending time with them. That's awesome. How, how old are your kids? Uh, they're all in their 20s. Uh, so we've got... Uh, I've got two uh, two daughters that are the youngest and two boys that are the oldest. So we've got some balance there. <laughs> <laughs> girls were easier. The girls were easier than the boys. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I know you know one of the topics that we were going to dive in today was just um, you know it's always uh, really valuable to spend time with um, employees and spend time with your you know your your clients. Um, and being able to do that, you know, obviously you need to try and automate your business and just make things almost like seamless, whether you have a playbook or some other way. So uh, talk to me a little bit about, you know, workflows and automating things within your business just so you could spend more valuable time with your employees or your, your clients. Yeah, I think that's like really, that's what that's what the heart of attentive AI is, right? Our Our job is to to really automate uh, any workflow that you can inside the business, specifically focused on the landscape industry, um, and then really inject AI into every aspect that we can. And obviously, there's a certain level of AI that you can inject into the business today and the workflows today. And six months from now, you know, it'll be even higher. A year from now, it'll be even higher percentage. So we'll continue to grow down that path. But really, the job is to you know, it, it's a lot of technology talk, but the why behind it is because of the people, really. And so anything that we can help automate in a landscape business takes a lot of time off people's plates to be able to go, A, in my opinion, the most important piece as leaders in the industry is go spend it with your people, not your customers, build build into your people so that they can then go spend that time, you know, with your customers. So really it's it's technology enabled, but it's people focused is like how I think about it in my mind. And, you know, one example at Attentive is is really where we started, you know, almost four or five years ago was uh, really automating the takeoff process. And so, you know, back in the day, I still got my wheel. Uh, and then we moved to, you know, uh, 
drawn polygons on the screen. Pretty manual as well, but a big improvement uh, to the wheel and doing takeoffs. And then right now it's fully automated. So you can actually get a takeoff completed in or a takeoff submitted in under 60 seconds. And then you can go about your day and spend time doing whatever that is, whether if you're a salesperson spending more time, you know, need to need hip to hip with potential customers. Uh, if you're in operations, developing an operational plan or a job script for a job that you have already sold. Uh, if you're a leader, you know, you're enabling your people to do more with less, essentially. Uh, so that's just one example, but it kind of carries on down with our Accelerate business management software, uh, where, you know, whether that's a, an automated uh, one-click uh, estimate or uh, an automated proposal through proposal templates, automated invoicing. Um, so I think, you know, that's how I think about it is like everything that we can automate, we should because we're a people and service-based industry. And the more time we can spend with our people, both our team team members and our customers, the better off we're going to be and the higher retention rates we're going to have and the, the better growth we'll have inside of our business and out. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, because you know, when you were talking there, it reminded me of, you know, when I had my business where, you know, the, at the time we didn't really think too much about it that, you know, we were happy to send out business developers to go and measure huge HOAs that would spend, you know, half a day or full day out measuring with a wheel. It'd be 110 degrees in Phoenix. You know, maybe the the results that came back were hit or miss depending on how diligent they were and measure how good they were. And then it was a case they would labor over the, the estimates. Um, so to try and automate a lot of that information, and yeah, still there's needs some human um oversight to make sure it's accurate but to help with uh, almost that, that consistency uh, and, and then I also think about you know, there's so many companies that talk about the struggle to find good employees you know that are dedicated that are committed so to again eliminate some of that uh, frustration and be able to just you know rely on some of the information coming in through measurements through AI, I think is huge. Yeah, I agree. And I had I had almost the inverse uh, experience, Robert. You were in Phoenix with the heat. I was in Michigan with the cold. So <laughs> I learned really quickly, right? Like we had, you know, back in the day, I had my wheel and I had my takeoff paper. And you know, I was a rookie in the industry, and it was like I think it was probably like a November or December morning. And it was super cold. I took a pen. And I learned real quickly, like not to take a pen because the ink doesn't flow when it's that cold out in Michigan in the winter. So, you know, we're solving big problems here, right? With that one. But I think, you know, that was like, that's the, that's the idea is I envision as we continue to, to go, you know, finish up 2024, go into 2025 and beyond, especially like that estimator position. Um, there's so much time that was spent on like the takeoff and then the data entry or manual entry into the estimate. And then from there, we spent all of our time there and it's the 11th hour, maybe even day of, I've spent many a days day of adjusting the estimate, doing a production review, value engineering, trying to tweak it to where the costing is accurate. What kind of margin do I want to get on this? Having the right conversations with the right operational team to make sure that we have uh, you know, what crew is going to be on this, you know, job if we win it, essentially. And, you know, what equipment do we have available to put on this job? Those are like the really important questions that we need to be having some conversation on. And so many times in my own experience, that was pushed to the last minute where it was just more of a cookie cutter answer. And we didn't put our best foot forward with the automation process. This is just one instance of it. But this is where we can take the takeoff and the takeoff flow into the estimate off the plate of that estimator and really level that position up to where they're thinking through how to operationally perform the job. They're thinking through the job script and they're actually coming alongside of, you know, the sales team in a very proactive approach to where you know, ideally you're increasing your close percentages by having a really good plan. Because, you know, I always look at it once you get in the door, you're, you're, the customer wants to know three things. They want to know what are you going to do on the site? How are you going to be safe on the site? And then how are you going to communicate to me what you did on the site? A job script or an operational plan that an estimator team can help put together for that sales team helps communicate all those things, like identifying safety risks on the site ahead of time, having a, a complete map of all the takeoff data that you can sit down and show them and walk them through how you're going to operationally do this job. That stuff 
needs to be done, right? And so many times it's not done till post job. And so the beauty of it is, is ideally that automated workflow can help increase your close percentages when you go in for a job, but it also makes the site safer for your team members, which should be priority one. Lastly, you spend some time doing that up front as the job wins, you've already got your operational plan that you can actually communicate to your crew and really hit the ground running day one, rather than everybody showing up day one and saying, okay, how are we going to do this? Which, you know, I'll raise my hand. That was most of the time when I had my crews out there on a new job. Yeah. I've seen cases where you know jobs been bid. There's just been a, such a poor handoff between say sales and operations. The branch manager then gets frustrated 30 days into the job. Why, why is that job failing because of that handoff? So to help to automate it and come up with a almost like setting the job up for success. You know, it's the same with employees. You know, a lot of companies do a really bad job of onboarding new employees. It's the same with new jobs. If you if you go in and do all the work up, up front, then it helps with the success of that job. Yeah, and I, I when I when I think about what you just said there, Robert, I think about like what's the root cause of like why we don't onboard our employees the right way, or why are we not onboarding a job the right way? And when I think about it, I don't come down to like we've got bad team members or they don't care or none of none of those answers are typically what I've experienced. Certainly there's the one-off situations. When I root cause it, it's typically time. There's just so much stuff that you have to do. Something has to fall off the table, so to speak. And that is the why behind the automating process. Back to my first point is like, it's about the people. The technology is about the people. It, it starts It starts with the why and why are we going to do this? And we need to help our people understand, okay, this is a paradigm shift, right? You spend a lot of your time. I've had conversations with estimators, right? They spend a lot of their time on the takeoff process. And I've had many ask me like, if I'm not doing this, what am I doing? Right? Like, and they're capable of so much more. It's just, that's not what they're used to in that specific instance. So I think it's a key part of leadership is helping our team understand like, this is what we're going to change. And this is why we're going to change it and lead with that why first. And that'll help, you know, with the adoption side of it. Yeah, no, I love that. And and we don't explain the why on multiple different levels, whether it be estimating, whether it be instructing people what to do. How often do you, I mean, there's obviously this, you're going to come across naysayers or just people saying, well, this this automation or this estimating can't work because oh, they've classified, classified this area wrong or you can't, for example, put production rates against you know, tree work, for example. I mean, how often do you come across that type of scenario and how, how do you handle that type of pushback? When I started on the technology side a little over two years ago inside the industry, pushback was was pretty hard. Um, I did it. So before I joined Attentive, I bought the software to help my team. And I had like I was like, this isn't this isn't really a thing. Like I gotta still measure it myself. And did some testing and some, you know, comparison on accuracy and, and things worked out great. Um, so I, I had I, that issue of like pushing back against the technology side or the automation side as well. And over the course of the you know past two years, I think, you know, a lot of the conferences we attend, a lot of the other technology, comp- great technology companies we have in the industry are pushing the industry forward and getting people to think differently about it. So I see that wall coming down. I think it still exists, Right. And I think the the big way to help that is it's not removing the human element from it. It's enhancing the human element of it. So all this information, right? Some of my conversations with my team before moving over to Attentive was, hey, we're going to do this. This is This is what we need to do to get efficiency built into our sales process at that time. That was our main issue. But I want you, you're better than what you're doing right now. I want you to focus on this high value, high leverage area because I know you can do it and you have the the knowledge to be able to do it. It's just all your time has been taken up here. So I view it as more of an enhancement of the human element that's leveraged through technology. And if you come at it from that vein, you're still going to have people that are going to push back and that's fine. You know, they'll get to it in their own time. But I think it helps them understand that, okay, this is actually here to help me not replace me is probably a big piece of it. Yeah, you're almost retooling them, retraining them, changing their mindset. And sometimes that can be, I suppose, work quicker with some people than, than others. 
Um, with the use of AI and all the different technology and the data that is now being thrown at us, where do you feel as though we're going in terms of analysing that data? Because, you know, data is coming from multiple different softwares or channels. I think it's still early stages of somehow connecting the dots. What, what's your thoughts around where it's going? Yeah, I think data is everything. It really is is. And then step two is how do you use that data? There's a time coming in the industry where people that collect their data are going to advance very quickly with more velocity on improving their business, growing their business, all those different success metrics that we track. The people that don't collect their data are going to be stagnant. And the reason I say that is I, I think of that old term, data is oil, right? It's the new oil, essentially. And it really is because the ability for us to process that data is becoming much and much, much quicker. And Robert, I don't know, do you like on your day to day, are you using chat GPT at all? Like, is that something you've experimented? Oh, several times a day. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's, it, it's crazy. I've got like the paid version of, like, if anybody takes anything out of this, like time together, it's like, start using that. You'll figure it out. Trust me. But I started, you know, about a year ago where I had chat GPT up and I used it maybe once a week. Now it's like, I got my calendar up, I got my email up, I got my Slack up and I got chat GPT up. Those are my four, four tabs that are always up. And if I got a thought that I need to process or I, I just punch it in there. So it's starting to become more of my workflow and that'll continue to get more and more integrated. But my point here is like, I, I wanted to think about how we're compensating our sales professionals inside of attentive. And I had a, a couple examples of technology compensation plans. And I dropped them into chat GPT and I said, you know, come at this with me from a sales professional standpoint. What are the things I'm going to love about this comp plan? What are the things I'm not going to love about it? And then suggest some ways that I could make it better. Right. Robert, it came back and it was like, it was better than any answer I could have given. <laughs> right. Like In fraction of the time. Yeah. In, in less than 30 seconds, it, it processed those spreadsheets. Right. And I, I use that as an example to say the data that you have in your business is there. It's everywhere. It's out in the field. It's how much, how many mower hours you're having per week to run efficiency reports on your mowers. And if you need more, or if you need less, or if you're utilizing them well, it's starting to come into the business with uh, auto autonomous mowing as well. So there's going to be so much data created that we have access to. The idea is that we need to capture it in a system and we need to be able to process it and put it right in front of our team's faces of like, hey, this is what we're seeing. These are some of the high priority things we need to change to drive the business forward. So that's what I see as like the next step in the industry is like capturing that data, processing that data. Technology will continue to advance. It's whether you're going to hop on that now, hop on that six months from now or five years from now. No, 100%. And uh, yeah, I, same thing. I have, you know, the emails, the calendars, the, the Slack for that messaging, you know, the chat, GPT, those are my staples. You know, when we talk about, you know, trying to sell the landscape industry to up-and-coming people that are coming out of college, schools, you know, everybody has their same perception of landscape company or the green industry. But, you know, when you start talking about AI, robotics, uh, data, I mean, that, that brings a different type of talent level needed. So, I mean, is that going to change the industry? Is that going to change how what type of people we're looking for? I think it will, yeah. And I think it'll, that, in my opinion, I totally could be wrong here. That'll probably be a natural progression because the individuals coming out of, you know, school will will be approached by these technology companies, right? I mean, we, we do it ourselves uh, as far as like, uh, technology oriented individuals. And then there's also people inside our industry today that can upskill. I think I'm like, I'm a, I'm an example of it, right? Like I'm in my mid forties. I spent 20 years in a landscape industry essentially. And now I'm on the tech side, but by no means am I a technology expert, but there's a need to, in the industry to help understand like the landscape side of the business and the technology side of the business and, and be that translator in between of like how we can use these tools that are bubbling up sometimes on a monthly basis. And I think that will pull people out of college into our industry, which is which is needed. But I think we also need to support our, our associations, right, that publicize our industry and market our industry as well. And ALP is a perfect example of that. Like, we need to be supporting of that so that we can make sure that there's visibility to an industry 
in in the green space that's changing and becoming more technologically mature, I would say. When I think about thought leaders retreat, you know, one of the speakers towards the end started talking about chat GPT and AI. And you know, it was a packed room and you could see people you know, writing notes on the edge of their seats, just trying to figure out. And, you know, the, the presenter, you know, went back to pretty much the basics and went through some examples. So, you know, it said to me that, you know, there's a lot to be done to sort of try and educate people on things like chat, GPT or, or similar platforms. But how how do people, I mean, if somebody's listening to the show here thinking, I need to think about AI, data, bringing that into my business, and they still don't have a clue in how to even take those first steps. What were some of the things you feel as though they can do just to dip their toe in or just, you know, make that first step? You, you obviously did it when you when you joined your company. I would say there's a couple things that come to mind. One, it's very simple. You have to block the time out to be able to do it, right? So I've said this a few times. Take an hour, whatever it might be, take an hour each week to block out on your calendar to spend on prioritizing what your issues are inside your business and then researching the technology that could potentially solve that. And I think it's really important to not overthink this. There's so much stuff out there. There's software, there's uh, data analytics, there's telematics, autonomous mowing. There's all these different things that you can do for your business, but each business is unique and you need to understand what can you do that gives the biggest impact to your business and focus there and, and really dial in your scope to that and say, okay, now who are the people that I can follow on social? Who are the people that I see in the industry that are already doing it? I think the beautiful thing about our industry, Robert, is like everybody's so open to helping. Even if you're a competitor, it's amazing to me sometimes like the information that's shared uh, at some of our conferences and just that I hear in conversations that I'm having. And I'm always getting requests like, hey, do you know this person in the industry? Can you connect me? I'd love to I'd love to chat with that person about X, Y, and Z. And everybody's so open to do it. So I would say use the industry that we're in because I've been in other industries and it's not it's not that way all the time. So I think it's a beautiful thing about our industry. But reach out to people, have a conversation. You can learn a lot. Follow people on social that are that are in the technology space. And it doesn't even have to be industry related. I follow probably 10 to 15 individuals that are just focused on the development of AI in the technology space on LinkedIn. And I read their articles from time to time when I'm on LinkedIn and I learn a lot that way. And so I think that's another way to be able to like begin to, you know, absorb through osmosis and just have that technology mindset. But the key is blocking the time. If you don't block the time, you'll never have it. And then really driving focus into what's going to impact your business the most and then start to go learn about that. Take baby steps. You can't just say, hey, I'm going to implement X, Y, or Z and do it next month. Draw it into phases. Like, okay, how can I how can I use ChatGPT2 as our example before, you know, just in uh, once a week. And then you'll eventually start to learn it and it'll start to become your daily thing where the tabs open all the time. No, you said three important things right there. And I just wanted to emphasize that is identifying the things, the needle movers in your business? What do you need to focus on? Because we all get caught up in the day-to-day minutia. We get caught up in the, the complaints, the payroll stuff, you know, that consumes our time. But if you block off that time to work on these needle movers, then focus on that, block off that time 100%. You know, the second thing I heard was just the the educational piece. What do I, what do I need to do to learn more about it? You know, there's YouTube, there's podcasts, there's, there's so many things. So being able to block off that time and do, do the research, there's so much stuff available. And then the third thing, you know, great book out there, Who, Not How. Uh, I think Dan Sullivan's one of the co-authors, but Who, Not How, it just, again, it's, it's the who. In the business, yep. a lot of the time, their connections or their their knowledge, their you know maybe their thought leader, you know if you if you make that connection, then you could learn so much from them rather than trying to figure it out yourself, make mistakes. There's people that have already been through those challenges, and you can learn really quickly from them. Yeah, agreed. And great, great book recommendation. I think that came up at the thought leadership retreat as well. That was one that I had written down and, uh, and procured since then a couple of weeks ago. Right. (laughs) Awesome. So to tell me, uh, tell us a little bit more about attentive, um, what you do, how people can reach out to you if they want to learn more. 
Yeah, no, I appreciate that, Robert. So uh, you can find us at attentive.ai, pretty simple. Uh, you can reach out to me uh, on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active there. Uh, as a whole, from a company perspective, uh, when it boils down to it, we help companies be more efficient by automating uh, workflow with technology. That's that's what we do. We're, uh, we're a SaaS company. Uh, we're a technology company, but first and foremost, we're a, a customer-oriented, customer-focused company. Um, so we always use the term a lot internally. The customer is our hero, essentially, and uh, you know I think that's one of my biggest goals inside of Attentive is as we as we grow internally as an organization that we keep the customer tightly wound into our our DNA. And, you know, that doesn't float away as we grow because sometimes as a growing business, it can do that. So that's really our main focus. But in general, Robert, we help uh, we help landscape companies automate their businesses so they can spend more time with their people and customers. What's the best way for people to reach out to you through LinkedIn or is there any other method you'd like them to, to reach out to you? Yeah, I would say LinkedIn's the best. That's pretty much the only social media app I'm on uh, on a regular basis, just from a mental health. Right. But, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. TikTok or all these, you know, all these other crazy ones. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. I never Not say <laughs> maybe you'll catch me doing a dance on TikTok. And <laughs> but, um, yeah. So in general, LinkedIn's the best way I try to be very active there and then try to get back to all my DMS as needed. Awesome. Sean, it's been a, uh, a real pleasure having you as a guest on the show today. Thanks for helping to educate us on uh, AI and workflows and just some of your, your knowledge. It's been excellent. And uh, yeah, I've, I've been following you on uh, in LinkedIn. Uh, you've got some great articles on there as well. So nice, nice job in helping the industry. Thank you, Robert. Really appreciate it. It's great spending some time with you today. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Take care. Thanks. Take care. Hopefully that was pure dead brilliant for you today and you got some great Ironman mindset takeaways for your business or your leadership role. This is Robert Clickabeard. Love to get you, your friends, your employees to join us in our future journey. So please subscribe to your various podcast channels. Visit our website, commerciallandscaper.com or wilson-360.com. You could check out our digital courses. You could check out peer groups, coaching, my book, Ironman Mindset for Entrepreneurs. And we just want you to have a pure dead brilliant day and finally I thanks again to boss business management software which is the ultimate cloud-based solution providing comprehensive insights and tools to optimize performance join the boss community today and transform your business so you too can say my boss is working for me cheers everyone